Um, to build up on Mick, um, when he was saying ways to actively solve the blame game, or what he thinks is the blame game. Um, and I do too think that that is the greatest challenge in our education system. Um, when I went to high school, it was all about rigor and relevance. Um, and so teaching rigorous course, courses, but making it relevant to the student. And I felt in high school that I was very challenged but I didn't know where this was gonna take me. So I think that's the biggest challenge is being able to teach rigorous and relevant knowledge to all students. Um, but an opportunity um, to go along with that is teaching um, the technology advancements that are coming our way, um, teaching in different ways and sharing you know, lesson plans with other teachers. Um, when I was in high school, I was in AP Biology and my um, High school teacher was really good friends with a teacher in Minnesota, and they went to college together, and they were emailing each other. We're like, well, is she teaching AP Biology? She was teaching AP Biology. So we, you know how you have pen pals in second grade? Well, we have pen pals as sophomores in high school. So we emailed these students back and forth. It was learning across the state. We were learning the same material, preparing for the same exam but we were using our technology, we were working on our communication skills, so that really taught me that there, even though something's challenging, you can make it relevant to your real life, so. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to call people's attention to the poster that's over there, which plays off of the uh, uh, slideshow that was coming, that was playing when we, when we came in. Uh, as many of us were coming in, we were greeting people and focused on other things, but Trace Pickering and the creative staff here at Grantwood AEA have done a really good job highlighting what I think is our greatest challenge, which is our wild success. The system that was designed you know, 100 years ago, 50 years ago, was designed for an industrial model. And it was so wildly successful that we became the envy of the world. But, while it was wildly successful, it has caused a significant problem. And that is because we are inferential processors in a quantum soup. And we're born with amazing abilities to perceive. But very, very quickly, our perceptions are narrowed by what is relevant to those around us. And then, God forbid, we develop some beliefs our perceptions are narrowed even further, and then you really get in trouble when you develop an intent, because that's really terrible. You might not even notice furniture being moved if you have a laser-focused intent, right? We have to so, we, the biggest limiting factor is our success has limited our perceptual field. We have to stand back so far to be able to see how this wonderful industrialization has also enslaved us. And to be able to have a community conversation that allows educators to innovate. Because it is not just one thing that can flip this switch. Uh, we had a very interesting presentation from, uh, from East Lansing about what they're doing to create a culture of innovation. And someone asked, what's the one thing that you can do? And they said, there is not one thing. It's the school system that's tied in with the government, that's tied in with the uh, business community, that's tied in with the arts and cultural institutions, tied in with the nonprofits, and the whole system has to change to enable the culture of innovation to prevail, which I believe is the culture that will allow us to compete in the world uh, going forward. Well, good evening. Um, I'm not sure about a something or other soup, but uh, I can certainly tell you that any three-year-old can see the arrow in the FedEx sign, and most six-year-olds can, because we've taken it out of them by showing them the relevant other symbols there. Think about it. Think about FedEx. Uh, the greatest challenge uh, for superintendent. Uh, is how are we going to support these kinds of innovations and transformational models uh, when we have uh, and we are
captive to a legislative process that uh, does not see the innovative, transformative issues that uh, Ron Fielder talked to you about in the, inter in the introduction. Uh, we are captive to a political process, and until we can get past that, we're going to have some difficulties. That is a great challenge. Opportunities. Uh, opportunity really uh, abounds for us to change the nature of the work. Uh, to change the nature of the work from uh, solely looking at input processes to outputs. To look at student work and student outcomes. And we need to become much more student focused uh, and, uh, and laser like student focused. And we can do that in education now and that is a great transformative formative change that has occurred just in my lifetime because of the way in which we can handle the data that we could not do when I started in this business uh, so many years ago. Thank you, Dr. Benson. I'm just glad that you say I was one of your obstacles. That makes me feel good. Um, I'm, I would like to speak. Greatest challenge. Good. I'm not as great as um, I am going to speak from the perspective of the teachers in our community, and so I am going to bring it down a little bit to um, the day-to-day -day <coughs> that we live in, and it does seem like every day when you pick up the paper, um, there is a call for greater teacher accountability. And while we won't shy away from that, I think it's important that we're here talking about the fact that we're not in this alone, and that this is a community um, issue that we all need to work on and every day I want you to know that our teachers come to school ready to engage kids in their classroom and it's been that way since education began but I will say that things have changed as, as was stated earlier 50, 20, even 10 years ago. Um, consider some things to think about in our community. The, the poverty level has decreased and we need to talk about that. James Cedar Rapids alone, what's our percent, Dr. Benson? 50? In our elementary buildings, 50% of our students are living in poverty. Um, that is a number that we need to talk about and we need to have out there in, in a conversation. Both parents work in the majority of our households, and with that it means many of them have more than one job. And we have to rethink homework. We have to rethink the value of homework and what the intent of that is. Then just consider this, the media and technology frenzy that is going on with our students. Not only do we have to keep up with it as practitioners, but we have to monitor and calm any effects that might have happened over Facebook the night before and uh, deal with those pressures throughout the day as well as monitor, assess, test. I was at um, one of our high schools, I won't name it, the other day, and I ran into a kid who was texting. I was just kind of giving him a hard time like I was important because I had a badge. And, he told me, this was 9 o'clock, he had already sent 300 texts that morning. Um, I shouldn't be shocked. I have kids in our school system as well. I have an eighth grader, but, um, you know, it puts us in perspective. I also put his name down for a future media communication job. <laughs> but to be blunt, another piece I want to share is the lack of respect that is shown to authority figures in general right now and to each other. Um, but, but that high level of respect just, just isn't there. And I know you have to earn respect to an extent, but we also have to teach that that's really important, that our administrators are important, our teachers are important, our police officers are important, and as parents, you're important. So I think those are some challenges we need to think about here in our community. Um, but I want to think that an opportunity is what we have right here. And you have educators who are willing to do whatever it takes. We have a McKinley, um, grant that we're working on with community conversations and we have teachers leading that saying tell us what we need to do nothing is off the table in those conversations and I think that's important and I think it's um, it's kind of out there so I just appreciate being here I think our opportunities are vast 